confidence intervals in Excel. A confidence interval gives an idea of how sure we are about an estimate of a population parameter. We can find confidence intervals for estimated population parameters such as means, proportions and slopes. The interval gives a range of values that we are pretty sure contains the population parameter. To illustrate the idea of an interval, say you are trying to estimate a person's height to report to the police. If you estimated between say 5 foot and 6 foot, you're probably going to include the correct height as the range is so big, but it isn't a very useful piece of information. However, if you estimate between 5 foot 6 and 5 foot 7, you may have more useful information, but you may have missed the correct value. You could be 90% sure of being right. Similarly, with confidence intervals, the more sure you want to be that you include the population parameter, the wider the confidence interval will be. To illustrate the effect of sample size and standard deviation on confidence intervals, we will look at this example. We wish to find out the mean number of texts a university student sends in a day. Say we asked a random sample of 5 students and got the following values. Or we asked a random sample of 35 students and got these values. Or say our random sample of 35 students said the following. With which sample do you think you could give a smaller interval that you would be pretty confident contains the true mean of the population? Well, it wouldn't be the smaller sample as we didn't really get enough information to say anything much, so our interval would be quite wide. Out of the other two samples, we can see that there is less variation in sample C. The numbers are closer together. This means that the values in the population are probably closer together too. So we could give a narrower estimate of the population mean using sample C and still be pretty confident that we've included the population parameter. We can express this using a confidence interval. The formula for a confidence interval looks like this. The sample mean is in the middle and the width of the interval has three elements to it. The t value, the size of the sample, n, and the standard deviation of the sample, s. Here are the 95% confidence intervals for the three samples given earlier. In each case we are 95% sure that the population mean lies within the interval given. If we were to take 100 different random samples and find the 95% confidence intervals from them, then about 95% of those intervals would contain the true population mean. This also tells us that 5% of them would not contain the true population mean. How do we know whether our confidence interval does contain the population mean or not? We don't. We can be 95% sure that we're right, but that's all. To be more sure, we could make a 99% confidence interval, which would be a wider interval. Finding confidence intervals in Excel. Put the data in a column with the label at the top. Select Tools, Data Analysis, Descriptive Statistics, OK. Click in the Input Range box. Highlight the data, including the label at the top. Select Columns and tick Labels in First Row. Click Output Range and click in the Output Range box. Click in a cell to the right of the data. C1 is good. Select Summary Statistics. Select Confidence Interval for Mean. And leave the confidence level at 95% for now. This is the default value. Click OK. Widen the columns and check Count to see that you have the correct number of observations. The last row of the output gives the value that must be added and subtracted from the mean to give the confidence interval. Enter the words lower bound and upper bound below the output table. The lower bound is the mean minus the value next to the words confidence interval. The upper bound is the mean plus the value next to the words confidence level. Decrease the number of decimal places to get the computer to round it for you. The answer is 11.2, 14.4. We are 95% confident that for the population, the mean number of texts a student sends in a day lies between 11.2 and 14.4. We can quickly do the same thing for 99% confidence. We can see that the 99% confidence interval is larger than the 95% confidence interval.